My name is Dr. Robert W. Allen. I am a professor of forensic science at uh, the School of Forensic Sciences at the Oklahoma State University Center for Health Sciences here in Tulsa. Uh, I've been asked to give you a little bit about my background, my history, and the path that uh, I followed that ultimately has taken me to where I am today. So I'm a native of Tulsa, went to high school here, graduated from the University of Tulsa with a bachelor's degree in zoology in 1972, went to Purdue University in West Lafayette, Indiana, and received my PhD in 1977 in the area of cell biology. Following completion of my degree, I went for postgraduate training for about four years in uh, La Jolla, California, a uh, suburb of San Diego, if you will, where um, I did research at a, uh, a research institute, Scripps Clinic and Research Foundation. Took my first job in St. Louis, Missouri at a large uh, regional blood center of the American Red Cross where I was employed as a scientific researcher to bring molecular technologies um, and explore the utility in the blood banking community. Um, I had every intention of uh, just being a basic researcher when I worked with the American Red Cross and uh, exploring the development of red blood cells uh, during hematopoiesis and the changes in gene expression that take place in developing red blood cells. But I was asked uh, as an aside by the CEO of the blood center if I would be willing to take over directorship of the Paradise Testing Laboratory. The Red Cross at the time had uh, uh, extensive expertise in blood typing and that was the technology used at the time by child support enforcement agencies within the county and the city to identify uh, true fathers, uh, delinquent dads, if you will, in paternity tests such that uh, those men would uh, be forced by the county to pay child support and help get the mothers and those families off of uh, the welfare rolls. Well, this, was, uh, this happened at about the time the uh, first reports appeared in the literature of uh, the tools that one could use to study variations in human chromosomal DNA. Uh, I realized uh, quite quickly that this technology was very likely to have application in uh, the parentage testing field. And so I began exploring uh, the clone banks, the clone DNA banks that I had accumulated over the years in my research for their ability to identify variability in human DNA. And it wasn't long before I discovered a handful of uh, these small snippets of clone DNA that could be useful for producing DNA profiles from uh, human DNA. So we began applying this technology in the parentage testing field and uh, realized very quickly that it also had application in criminal investigations. And so I got started looking at variability in human chromosomal DNA as a forensic investigational tool at about the same time um, a number of other uh, forensic scientists realized the potential as well. Scientists in the FBI <clears throat> and in government forensic laboratories in a number of countries in Europe. So since those, uh, those early days when I made the decision to abandoned my research in red blood cell development. My interests have been laser focused on uh, forensic DNA testing. Uh, my laboratory over the years has developed ways to extract DNA from uh, difficult samples, things like bone, for example, or teeth. Uh, we've devised ways, uh, even hold a patent for a method to determine how much DNA you've recovered from a sample which is uh, an important bit of knowledge as you design a strategy to produce a DNA profile from that sample. And uh, current research focuses on trying to use molecular techniques to determine the age 
of a biological sample recovered from a crime scene. In other words, how long has this blood stain been at this crime scene? And we're getting some very promising research uh, along those lines as well. So why do I like doing what I do? Well, probably the simplest answer I can give is that it is incredibly satisfying. Uh, as a basic researcher, you may spend an entire lifetime uh, working on a project that only out, allows you to add one little bit of information to uh, a library of knowledge about that particular topic. In forensic DNA, the first time that uh, uh, the work that I did in the laboratory resulted in a guilty uh, assailant in a rape case, getting sentenced to prison, I fell and felt an immediate uh, sense of gratification uh, as well as relief because I was enhancing the public safety that affected me as well. But um, over the years, this feeling has just been reinforced over and over and over again. Uh, I get a, a real sense of satisfaction when I identify some human remains. Now, granted, somebody in a family has died, and, and that's tragic, but to be able to reunite those remains with uh, surviving family members such that the circle of life in that family can be closed is, um, is a satisfying thing indeed, and uh, I cannot think of a better uh, application of my training and my skills in a way that, that benefits my fellow man. So that's who I am. Um, I hope that uh, you find the forensic uh, challenge associated with, uh, with this STEM exercise to be of interest. It's very real world. Um, and uh, I hope to see you later on, perhaps uh, sitting in a desk in front of me while I, while I lecture on DNA.